Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, online students, for joining us. Uh, good to see our in-person students and also welcome to our e-learning students who will be listening uh, to this lecture later on. Uh, we'll begin with a word of prayer. So can I ask John Blessy to lead us in prayer, please? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord, in this morning, Lord. Thanks for this day, God. Thanks for this time, O oh God, to give us, O oh God. As we are going to study a new publication today, O oh God, Kingdom Builders, O oh God. Be with us, O oh Lord. Guide us, O oh Lord. You teach us, O oh God, Holy Spirit. Help us to understand more about your word and more about this publication, O oh God. Uh, help us to grow in everything, O oh God. I submit everyone's hearts and minds into your hands, O oh God. Teach us, be with us, guide us. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So uh, I hope you got time to um, listen to the two lecture videos I posted yesterday. Anyone? None of you? Uh, what about... Uh, huh? Sorry? Oh, Friday evening or Saturday. Okay. Um, so what about our in-person students? You all get time to read, uh, listen to, sorry, listen to the uh, two lectures I posted. Anyone? Can I have some answers? Yes, at least no. Uh, online students, any one of you listen to the lectures? Which I posted the videos yesterday. Hello, anyone online? No, okay. Okay, okay, uh, please uh, listen to those um, um, uh, lectures, they are important. Um, thank you, Gertrude. Thank you, Shaker and Sam Daniel. Uh, so basically, uh, I have posted the lectures on uh, chapters 10 and 11. Um, of uh, the publication, The Kingdom of God, okay? So chapter 10, we are uh, uh, talking there about the literal kingdom. So I have um, uh, gone through each and every um, uh, scripture verse explained, uh, which is foretelling about the uh, literal kingdom, the, prof uh, the covenant that was made to David, um, that was prophesied by Isaiah, foretold by Daniel, uh, and then how Jesus was, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, born here as a king, you know, and the angelic announcement. Jesus' teaching on the literal kingdom is also there, a part of that video, and the purview of the coming uh, kingdom. What is the signs of the coming kingdom? And also talking about um, what we need to do. Uh, even before Jesus comes and establishes his literal kingdom, okay? So that is what um, uh, is mentioned in chapter 10, and also how as saints, as believers of the church, we shall possess the kingdom. So please take time to um, uh, listen to those lectures, okay? Uh, kingdom Mandate is chapter 11. Uh, it's a very beautiful chapter. Uh, just summing up everything that we learned, but also the kingdom mandate. What is the kingdom mandate? Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 and 10. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in uh, heaven. So um, we in this chapter, we look at how the kingdom is within us. We all know, right? The kingdom is within us. And through us, God's rule and reign, um, is works out from within us and extends to the environment um, and wherever we go. So God's authority, God's power that is his kingdom that is within us is a prevailing force uh, and goes and we carry that kingdom wherever we um, go. The kingdom of God is taken uh, and, uh, you know, and released wherever we go, uh, wherever uh, God gives us the opportunity uh, wherever he has placed us, the kingdom of God is in us. So his kingdom uh, power and his kingdom authority and dominion enters into every situation, every sphere, wherever he has. 
placed us. Okay. And also uh, we learn in this chapter that it's a pressing kingdom. Okay. Uh, means a kingdom that we need to press into. Uh, there's a dichotomy uh, in this kingdom. We learned that in the kingdom of God, we need to learn to be like uh, uh, childlike, okay, having childlike faith and trust in God, just trusting God, just believing Him like a child, okay, just waiting upon Him like a child, just abandoning ourselves to Him like a child. But also, there is a contrast that is there uh, in Matthew chapter 11, um, uh, uh, verse 12. It, you know, uh, Jesus says. Um, uh, you know, the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent take it by force. Okay. So there are times when we have to be childlike, just wait and just receive and just trust God in faith and just receive from him. There are times when we need to be violent in our or militant like in our spirit man. Violent, not physically, just going around and banging everybody, beating up everybody who's not giving you what you deserve it's not that but it's being violent in the spirit that means there are things that god has released the blessings that is already ours the provision that he's already made for us on the cross but satan or uh, uh, you know withholds that from us and so we need to be violent in our spirit man you need to be militant like in your spirit man so what do you do you you know, speak God's promises, you declare his promises, uh, you uh, press in, you declare the finished work of the cross, uh, you pray, you fast, you worship, you do whatever, till you receive what is rightfully yours, okay? Whether it's healing, whether it's peace of mind, whether it's salvation for your spouse, your children, um, or your children to walk in alignment with God's will, you know, whatever it is provision, it is a good job. Uh, uh, you know, whatever area we need to be militant like in our spirit man uh, to receive what um, God has already given to us, our blessings, okay? And everything uh, we learn in this chapter again, in chapter 11, that we have to be submitted to the king. So the to if you have to fulfill the mandate, you know, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When we're saying, God, let your kingdom reign, rule, your kingdom presence, your kingdom domain, your kingdom blessings, your kingdom prosperity. Let it be, uh, let, let I, uh, 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 you know, I want to see that in my marriage, in my family, in my uh, workplace, in my job, in my career, in my children you know, um, uh, uh, in my finances, whatever area you are speaking over it, to fulfill the kingdom mandate, we have to live our lives in submission to the king, okay? That means we need to welcome God's rule, his reign, his domain in every area of our lives, and we operate out of that kingdom of God perspective. Okay, where everything that we do is an extension of the king, king's domain, his rule and his presence. And also, um, you know, um, uh, unleashing the kingdom influence where you are beginning to, uh, you know, through kingdom thinking, kingdom culture, kingdom lifestyle that we learned about, you are beginning to influence the world around you. Okay, uh, so that is another aspect. And then advancing the kingdom invasion. So, uh, you know, uh, it's not only just influencing people with kingdom thinking, kingdom culture, and kingdom lifestyle, but also, you know, wherever you go, whether you are going to school or, you know, um, uh, in your home, in your family, uh, or, you know, um, the salary that you are earning, the job that you are doing, the ministry that you are doing, uh, what you are doing, um, uh, your, the way that you're serving in the church, you're saying, God, all this is for kingdom advancement, okay? And uh, I want your kingdom to be established here on earth as it is in heaven. And then also when you say that you will be advancing God's kingdom, what you need to do is look for ways how you can see his kingdom advance in uh, the areas. Look for, open your heart and mind for God to give you new perspectives, first fresh perspectives, strategies, and how you can advance his kingdom. I have given you uh, two nice examples, two nice uh, real life incidents uh, in that video so you can listen to it. And then also the last thing is, you know, even as you are willing to submit to God, 
uh, even as you're saying, God, I want your kingdom to be like that treasure where I'm willing to sell up, sell everything, just pursue a kingdom or like that pearl where I'm going to give up everything and pursue your kingdom or, and you're unleashing the kingdom's influence to your thinking, lifestyle, culture, and you're advancing the kingdom influence to the strategies and to the things that God wants you to do. You know, you will walk in kingdom authority, power and dominion and you will see his kingdom come. So I don't want what we have studied in this first publication just to be something, a course that you have attended, uh, where you have to do some assessments uh, and, you know, you have to finish this course. It is something that is so uh, practical, something that is so real that we need to live out, right? We are kingdom citizens. We need to learn to live like kingdom citizens. And we are here with a specific plan and a purpose not just to live here to get some uh, you know to get some degree to get some job to marry have children and you know to uh, you know uh, just fulfill the cycle that happens in every human being we are here for a specific purpose to extend his kingdom here on earth so i want you to see that in uh, what we are studying with that perspective and we've learned so many things i've also uh, you know uh, uh, in this um, videos try to encourage us how to live the kingdom mandate so you can please listen to those two videos and i'm sure you'll be encouraged about the literal kingdom and also how to fulfill the kingdom mandate okay and if you have any questions please post it on the um, uh, google uh, classrooms okay uh, I'm just, I was just very um, uh, disappointed yesterday with the um, way some of y'all had presented. Uh, you know, I happened to look at last year's the, um, uh, students who had presented some of the reformers. They had done such a good job, you know. Um, I, I made it easy for all of you just to say that, you know, y'all don't have to present uh, um, PowerPoints, uh, just made it light by saying this is more like a fellowship, just get to know each other because I don't want to, I didn't want to stress you out, stress all of you out by your presentations. I just wanted it to uh, make it more um, light and enjoyable. But I think all of you have taken it, most of you, not all of you, most of you have taken it way too light. I was quite disappointed with some of the attitude that some of you had in the way you had prepared. Um, some of you didn't prepare the things that were given to you. Some of you said you didn't have time. Some of you didn't attend the class on time when it was your this one. Uh, I was quite disappointed. I think this is not the attitude that we should have as kingdom uh, builders, um, as people in the kingdom. And I was just thinking that if it was something that we would do as an online course or another certificate course, you know, the, the education in this world is so demanding with the kind of assessments and the kind of papers, research papers that you have to write. We made it more easier for all of you at APC Bible College, but I think you all have taken it way too light. And um, I think that is not the way that we approach uh, what we do. And I was thinking if the same thing was asked of us in the secular place, in the job, where we work or if we had to do it in a, in a secular college, I'm sure the presentations would be way up standard and excellence, right? But when it comes to the to kingdom of God, when it comes to God, when it comes to church, we are more relaxed, we are more light. That's why we see people walking in so late to church. We don't forget to take our badges um, when we step into or to go to office or our laptops. Um, but when we come to church, we don't carry our Bibles. We just take our mobiles. It's all made so easy. Uh, and I think that's no way of uh, honoring God. I, I think um, God is a God of excellence, order, design, perfection. He wants excellence in his kingdom. And, uh, you know, we need to serve him with that kind of excellence. Because if you look at how he's created everything he's done it with with excellence right it's not everything is not half hazard or it's not okay today it's raining tomorrow i will uh, have summer in bangalore or it's too hot i'll send winter there is a specific order there is excellence there is beauty and i think we need to as um, kingdom citizens you know live up to that kind of excellence whether we are preaching teaching ministering going to church you know 
uh, going on time, carrying our Bibles, the way we honor God uh, should be with excellence because he's looking uh, at that. When we don't compromise all of these things in the worldly standards because we can get thrown out, you know, we take it very light when it comes to um, God's kingdom, right? And church and everything about God. And that is why we see a generation that is growing up with no moral standards and values and very laid back attitude because there is no sense of reverence and holiness to God. Okay. So please, whatever you do, whether it's your assessments, do it with integrity and honesty. Whether you are serving, whether you are teaching, whether you are ministering, please do that with excellence and integrity because we are doing it not for man, but we are doing it for God. And I'm sure if I don't come with prepared with and do things with excellence, you will not appreciate that. And I don't do that because I serve God and I want to do whatever I do with excellence. And I also was looking up and I was really disappointed yesterday and I was thinking whether I should ask students to teach because we have many of the e-learner students who are coming from uh, you know um, uh, from out of country and they would also be looking up to these lectures and if it's such a poor presentation nobody is going to be listening listening to the videos right and these are all reformers great men and women of god and i thought you will be excited to look at their lives learn from their lives and also uh, what we can receive you know how much they have given in if you look at some of them that we learned, they did things with excellence, right? And the way you have presented their lives was so sad. Okay, so please, um, those who are presenting next week, uh, do things with excellence and the pre next week as well. And whatever you do for the Lord, whether it's small or big, let's all do it with excellence so that God is honored and that he is pleased. Not man is pleased, but God is pleased, okay? Thank you. I didn't want to start with that lecture, but uh, yeah. Uh, we'll move on to the second uh, publication, uh, which we have to study, uh, Kingdom Builders. Okay. So uh, I posted that um, in the stream page yesterday. Yes, so you can access it uh, from there, all of you. <coughs> Just give me a second, please. Yeah. Okay, <clears throat> so the chapter one is uh, talking about um, uh, the kingdom and the church, okay, <coughs> sorry, chapter one is talking about the kingdom and the church and uh, it's basically reiterating everything that we have already studied in um, uh, the publication, uh, The Kingdom of God. So I'm not looking, going to be, um, uh, you know, looking at that because it's already been, um, I've already dealt with it and I've taught it in detail. So we're going to move on to chapter two, Christ and the Kingdom, okay? So we studied all about the Kingdom of God and we looked at the various aspects of the Kingdom of God, uh, that we belong and are part of the Kingdom of God. Uh, and hence, because we belong to the kingdom of God, we are to co-labor and co-partner with God in building his kingdom, okay? Because we are heirs of God, uh, we are children of God, we are part of this kingdom, and hence we need to co-labor and co-partner with God in building his uh, kingdom. So in this publication, Kingdom Builders, we will be basically studying the different aspects of kingdom building and 
uh, basically looking at how to be kingdom builders. Okay. Um, so I hope you are excited about that, how to be kingdom builders. And even as we learn, I hope you will implement everything. We would implement everything that we are learning. Okay. Now, Apostle Paul was used mightily by God uh, to establish and expand the kingdom of God and he was truly in every sense a great kingdom builder okay so in his epistle Paul shares what it takes to be a true kingdom builder and we look at one such passage in 1st Corinthians chapter 3 verse 6 and verses 9 to 11 okay so can somebody please read that 1st uh, Corinthians chapter 3 uh, verse 6 verse 9 uh, sorry verse 6 and verses 9 to 11 Verse 6, I planted Apollos water, but God gave the increase. Verse 9, for we are God's fellow workers, you are God's field, you are God's building. According to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it, for no other foundation can lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. So here we, in this passage, we see uh, several important things. Paul mentions that the church uh, represents, what does the church represent here? What does the church represent here? The field, okay? So the church represents a field where there are many workers cooperating to reap a harvest, okay? So a church is a lot like, you know, um, uh, uh, buildings, okay, the church is not a building, but church is like a building where there are walls raised together by co-workers, okay, so we are all co-workers building, raising up the walls, uh, uh, you know, that is uh, uh, the, 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 the church uh, which helps to, you know, protect the church or we are there to, uh, you know, uh, strengthen the church. Okay, the church is compared to uh, God's field, okay, and God's building, okay. So if you are God's field, our job must be to grow with each other, enrich other, uh, strengthen each other, build each other, and not quarrel with each other, okay. So that is what Paul is saying here, okay. And also, uh, being co-workers, with God, it means that we work together in unity to achieve what God desires or, or what God wants to be part of building his church. Okay, so that is what he wants. He looks up to us, each one of us, that as co-workers, he wants us to work together uh, to achieve unity um, and to build the church. And we are the co-workers with the king of this kingdom okay and this is what makes us as kingdom builders okay so we are working with him and in partnership or together with others to build people who are his kingdom so each one of us have a part to play in building God's kingdom each one of us have a work in building God's kingdom, regardless of what it is, or, you know, regardless of whether it's a high position or a simple or small position, you know, whether it's uh, 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 small or big is not important, whether equal is also not important. Everyone is equally important in the body of Christ. That means each one, whatever we are doing, small or big jobs, what small or big ministry, everything is important to enrich, to build, to strengthen and to extend the kingdom of God or to strengthen, build the church. Okay. So as kingdom builders, our relationship with the king is of primary importance. Okay. Uh, so we cannot build God's kingdom, you know, without having a personal, intimate relationship with the king of this kingdom look at what paul says in first corinthians chapter 3 verse 11 for no other foundation can anyone lay that which is laid which is jesus christ amen so in kingdom building we must always remember that christ is the foundation which means everything begins with 
him. He is a head, he is a preeminent one, and hence our relationship with the head, with the king is very, very important, right? Uh, in any place, you know, whether it's in the home, whether it's in the workplace, whether it's in the, in the, in society, you know, we always have a leader who is directing, who is leading us, uh, who is telling us what to do, okay? And so as people who are, you know, under that specific uh, authoritative structure that God has placed, it's important that we have a relationship. We listen to them. We, you know, hear them out, okay? So here also, you know, uh, being part of the kingdom of God, we have to have a relationship with the king. Only when we have a relationship with him can we know his heart, can we know his purposes, can we know what he has planned for his kingdom and what he is looking up to us to uh, do in specific um, uh, you know, uh, time frame uh, or specific seasons of our life, okay? Now, we think that uh, being part of the kingdom of God is just connecting with other churches, connecting with pastors, leaders, and influential people. Yes, it's important to have healthy relationships with other pastors, with other believers, with other churches, um, but, you know, uh, and other fellow ministers as well. But what really qualifies us to be kingdom builders is our relationship with the king, okay? Uh, look at another uh, um, passage of scripture that Paul writes. Um, Colossians chapter 1, verses 16 to 18. Can somebody read that, please? For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth. Visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. And he is the head of the body at the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he, he may have the preeminence. Preeminence. Thank you. Amen. So in kingdom building, we must remember that all things are by him. Who is the him here? Jesus. It's all by him, for him, and through him. Okay. And in all things, he must be the preeminent. That means he must be the foremost leader, the number one. So Christ should hold the highest and supreme position in every aspect of the believer's life and ministry. Uh, Christ should hold the highest and supreme position in every aspect of the church and everything the church does to build and extend God's kingdom. And Christ is to be esteemed, honored, and acknowledged above anyone or everyone. Okay, he's above all. Okay, if not, you know, the work that we do cannot be considered as Christ's building Christ's kingdom, it can be considered as building my kingdom, or it can be considered as building your kingdom, or you can put in anyone's name there and, you know, fill in the blank and say, you know, it is building dash kingdom, okay? So sometimes people start off by their love for God, start off their, uh, you know, passion to build God's kingdom, but slowly they are drawn away by personal agendas, personal ambitions. It becomes I, me, myself, rather than Christ being the center. And then it moves on from building Christ's kingdom to building their own kingdom, right? So that should be, that's a very thin, fine line where we need to uh, be mindful, be sensitive. And, you know, that comes out of, you know, our deep personal intimacy and relationship with God and also fellowshipping with the Holy um, Spirit, okay? So, Christ should be acknowledged, honored, esteemed above everything and everyone else, okay? If at the end of our ministry or at the end of my ministry or my teaching or preaching, if people are more excited about me, okay, than with God and his word, then my preaching has truly not, you know, served the purpose of kingdom building and I have not served truly as a kingdom builder right? And we see this in the Gospels. Every time Jesus did a miracle, every time he taught, every time he uh, taught about the kingdom of God or he preached to them, what was the people's reaction? What was the people's reaction? 
What did they do? The Pharisees and Sadducees were not happy, okay? They were filled with awe, okay? And what did they do? They followed Jesus, okay? What else? They praised God. They glorified the Father, okay? That's what the Gospels say. They glorified the Father, right? So did Jesus fulfill the Father's will by doing his ministry? Yes, because every time he was pointing to the Father. Every time they asked him a question, he said, I only say and I only do what my father asked me to do, right? I only go where my father asked me to go. Or the father knows. Or it's, you know, I've come from the father, okay? I've heard from the father. So it's always pointing out to the father. And that is why people glorify the father when they saw Jesus' ministry, right? Even when we come to Paul's life, we see that, you know, how was Paul truly a kingdom builder? You have any insights to share? How was Paul truly a kingdom builder? Online students? Online students, anyone likes to share? He preached and he uh, built uh, so many churches. <clears throat> he okay. was responsible for building churches. My voice is bad, teacher. <laughs> no problem. Uh, no, I'm saying uh, in what sense he was truly a kingdom builder. Yes, he did all of those things, yes. But in what sense was he truly a kingdom builder? Sister, uh, I think by winning souls into the kingdom. Okay, by winning souls into the kingdom. Okay. In the light of what we've been speaking, how was Paul truly a kingdom builder? Yes, he won souls, he wrote, he established churches, he pioneered things, but how was he truly a kingdom builder? All that is there, I understand, I know. He led many to, he was, he did not build his own kingdom, right? He was always pointing them to, to Jesus, to the finished work of the cross, and he says, I am the least of you know, all the sinners, right? But but Christ Jesus had mercy upon me and saved me, right? So he's always pointing out to the encounter that he had on the road to Damascus. And also, how was he truly a kingdom builder? He did not build his kingdom, but, you know, in that sense, but he built God's kingdom in a sense that he raised up many men and women and leaders. And so after Paul you know, uh, was martyred. We see all of these who were sons of the faith, all those who, who he mentored, all those he taught, he, they actually went out. He empowered them to go out and to do the gospel, to reach out, to establish churches. He also made them leaders in strategic churches and places that he had gone and ministered. It was not all about I, me, myself, you know, Paul the Great, but it was all, it was all, uh, building up other people, getting many people on the team, identifying people, and also doing uh, ministering and, you know, uh, establishing them in the work of the gospel. Okay. And uh, truly a kingdom builder in the sense, writing so much of content of the revelations that he has um, received. And in, 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 None of his writings, we see any place where he is, you know, going away from the doctrines, going away from the teachings, going away from his calling that God has placed him, always pointing to Jesus Christ, always pointing to the cross. Okay, so that was uh, uh, who a true kingdom builder is. A true kingdom builder is pointing people to the Father, is pointing people to God, is pointing uh, people to the truth in God's word, right? That is what we re we also study about the reformers. All of them looking at the truth in God's word and pointing to the truth in God's word. So if we want to be true kingdom builders, then we are not looking at building our own empires or our own churches where after we die, there is no one to shepherd the flock, but looking up to raise people, not just, you know, from our, our own succession, from our own bloodline, but looking at other people in the churches, how we can, in our churches, how we can empower them, how we can raise them up to be kingdom builders and looking at every believer as a minister. 
right? Not looking at me as somebody who's a minister, somebody uh, like me who's, you know, have the calling of the fivefold office, but looking at everyone, how we can raise them up into building up a, uh, uh, you know, uh, a powerful church and also raising them up to be kingdom builders, okay? That is what we need to do if we have a small team of, uh, you know, uh, people who are praying with you or you're leading a Bible study group or you're leading a cell group or a life group or you're leading a church or, you know, a ministry, that is what you need to do. Empower people so that they can lead after you, you know, um, raise them up to be leaders, okay? So, we see that, you know, um, as kingdom builders, we need to understand that kingdom building is all about building his kingdom. It's not about my ministry. It's not about my church. It's not about your ministry or your church. But uh, the kingdom is not mine nor yours. It is his kingdom. And so we have to look at building his kingdom. Okay. Uh, so can somebody please read Matthew chapter 6 verse 10. Matthew 6, verse 10, please. Matthew 6, 10. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Amen. So our desire should be to see his kingdom come and not my ministry come. Okay. We are here to do what he wants us to do on the earth. And God is in heaven. He expresses his will here on the earth. And he looks at his people on earth to execute his will and his plan and purpose. And even as we do that, we need to glorify God alone. Can somebody else please read uh, Matthew 6 uh, verse 13, please. Matthew 6, 13. For you are is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. So as kingdom builders, our purpose is clear. What is our purpose from this verse? All the glory belongs to God. It is to glorify God alone. We should not desire any glory, not even a small portion of the glory for our Selves, okay so this can be a very subtle area where we can deceive ourselves you know sometimes we can give 90 percent of the glory to god uh, and desire 10 percent of the glory for ourselves okay it's a very subtle thing we are human we need to always correct ourselves okay when we do that we need to just correct ourselves and think okay i need to give god all the glory okay so we draw sometimes our attention to ourselves as though it was because of our power our prayer, our character, our charisma, our words, you know, uh, the way we prepare the sermon, our virtue, you know, uh, and, you know, the wonderful things that happen is all because of us. It's not our words, it's not our ministry reports, it's not our testimonies, but all should be geared to have people's eyes on God. Even as you share things, you are leading them to focus on God. And even as you do things, you know that, you know, hey, this was not me. This was truly God. I couldn't have done it in my own strength. Okay. So this is, um, you know, like Peter and John who went, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, and the lame man uh, in the, uh, you know, who was in the crowds and the lame man was healed. And, uh, you know, Peter and John spoke to the crowds and said, you know, um, uh, why do you uh, marvel at us, you know, or why do you look intently at us as though by our own power or godliness we made this man walk, okay? Acts chapter 3 verse 12. And who did they point to? Jesus Christ, right? They said, don't look at us. Don't marvel, uh, like as if to say, we have done it in our own strength, in our own power or our, or, or our own godliness. We did not make this man walk, but they pointed out to Jesus Christ. So even as uh, we uh, do things, you know, we need to move in the same way. We need to move out from a place of looking for our own glory, uh, applause, and, um, you know, um, uh, people to praise us. But we need to learn to give all the glory to God. Okay. It's only when we truly seek to glorify God that our hearts will be pure and no unrighteousness will be found in us as we read in John chapter 7 verse 18. Can somebody read John chapter 7 verse 18 please? John chapter 7 verse 18. He who speak for himself 
सिक्स सिक्स हिज ओन ग्लोरी ओन ग्लोरी बट ही हु सिक्स द ग्लोरी ऑफ वन हु सेंट हिम इन थ्रू एंड ट्रू इज ट्रू एंड नो अनराइटनेस इज in him amen thank you so he who speaks for himself seeks his own glory but he who seeks the glory of the one who sent him is true and no unrighteousness is in uh, him okay so we see that when we seek uh, to glorify god you know there is no unrighteousness in us and we are serving god with a pure heart okay can someone else please read first thessalonians chapter 2 verses 4 to 6 please first thessalonians chapter 2 verses 4 to 6 it's not there in your uh... but as we have been approved by god to be entrusted with the gospel even so we speak not as pleasing men but god who tests our hearts for neither at any time did we use flattering words as you know nor a cloak of covetousness god is witness nor did we seek glory from men either from you or from others yeah so paul is testifying here he's saying that you know we have been entrusted the gospel to speak the gospel and even as we do it we are not doing it to please men right when we we studied in uh, you know uh, in church history yesterday uh, or you know in, in our class in um, uh, christian history and missions we saw you know paul's missionary journeys right when he went to corinth when he went to athens even though there were learned people philosophers we see that he does not just engage in debates and arguments regarding philosophy but he just listens to them but he also presents the truth of the gospel so he speaks in a way not pleasing to men but just speaks the truth of the uh, gospel okay and does not use flattering words but he seeks we he says we do not seek to glorify men or please men but we seek to glorify god okay and so that is what we need to do as well so the motivation of our hearts whether to preach teach to minister to do all, anything for god's kingdom should always be to please god and not to please men okay if what we do is you know angled in such a way you know that we get we give the glory uh, to god and not to man then the motivations of our heart is pure if not it is not pure okay so we need to remind ourselves that our god is a jealous god okay Uh, jealous means not in the wrong sense of how we look at jealousy so jealous god means he does not tolerate his glory being given to anyone else not that he's craving for glory not that he's craving for praise and appreciation and that is what makes him god no that is again not his nature but giving him the glory uh, basically means that when we give him the glory we are acknowledging who he is we are acknowledging uh, that he is king that he is lord we are acknowledging that we are here to do his plan and his purposes yes sister get through sister only god the father gets the glory what about jesus also gives glory to his father what about uh, as a trinity they are all co equal so shouldn't they all get the glory sister Yes, all of them get the glory, the the Father, the Son, and the Holy uh, Spirit. Okay, because even Jesus, I think, when he uh, uh, in 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 John chapter seventeen, when he is, uh, you know, after he heals that uh, 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 um, the the person in the pool of Bethesda, I think it is John chapter seventeen. Um, uh, he he's talking, and then they say, well, "Who are you, you know, to heal on a Sabbath?" and to forgive sins and then he talks about you know um uh his relationship with the father that he's come from the father that you know uh he's uh, just like the father is to be praised and worshiped he's also to be praised and uh, worshiped okay so yes all three of them father son and the holy spirit are all uh, co-equal uh, each one of them are god 
and we need to glorify each one of them. Even as, you know, Jesus gives the glory to the Father, uh, that is what he was doing in out of submission and obedience to the Father uh, when he was here on the earth and also in, uh, you know, um, in, uh, in submission to who the Father is, you know, he is giving him the glory, but, uh, you know, it's teaching us that we also, you know, just like Jesus gives the glory to the Father, submits to the Father, in obedience to the Father, and also whatever the Holy Spirit does, he reveals, he does it to glorify Jesus. So even as each person in the Trinity, even as they are perfectly equal, but each one of them give each other the glory, it is teaching us, they are modeling us that we also need to give glory to those who are in authority, those who have God has placed in authoritative structures in our uh, uh, places of authority in our lives, and also that we need to give glory to the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Did that help? Thank you, Sister. Yeah, that's a good question. Thank you. So Isaiah chapter 42, verse 8. Can somebody read that, please? Isaiah chapter 42, verse 8. I am, the Lord. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory I will not give to another, nor my praise to ca carved, carved images. images. Amen. Thank you. So, you know, so Jesus, uh, uh, God is saying that he will not give, share his glory with anyone else. You know, why does God want us to give him the glory? Because we know that when we don't give him the glory, we are giving the glory to Others, we're taking the glory for ourselves. That is pride, and pride is going to bring our downfall, yeah. right? Pride is going to take us away from him and, you know, become uh, citizens or uh, children of the kingdom of Satan. And he doesn't want us. And so he wants us to also one of the aspects of that is to give him the glory. So look, let's look at what Jesus said about giving all the glory to God and not looking to receive honor from uh, men. OK, uh, look at what Jesus said in John chapter 5, verse 41. I do not receive honor from men. Yes, so we need to come to that place uh, before God where we will not desire honor from men, but desire only honor from God, where we will live not only for the applause from heaven, not dis uh, desiring the uh, applause and appreciation from men, you know, but we are truly seeking to glorify God. Okay, so when we are not looking for applause from men, not looking for praises from men, then we are truly seeking glory from God. John chapter 8, verse 54. Can somebody read that? Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. Okay, so honor that is self bestowed is not true honor. Okay, and is devoid of any value. Okay, so our hearts must be totally void of any desire for praise from men. And this is what makes us true kingdom builders. I'm reiterating this again and again because this is so important for us to know to be grounded as kingdom builders. You know, sometimes it is so, you know, in our carnal nature, in our human uh, tendency, uh, we are so prone and inclined to receive praise from men. When we don't, we get very disappointed, frustrated. Many people have even uh, stopped ministering and giving, and they gave up the kingdom of God, stopped ministering in the kingdom of God. But, you know, this is something that is very, very important that we are not looking for praise or uh, from men, we're not looking from uh, clothes from men, but, you know, commendation from God and, uh, you know, just trusting on him and depending on him. So the real test of where our hearts are, we need to test our hearts and see, you know, always, hey, am I looking for praise for men? If you're looking for praise for men, then you need to correct your self. I need to correct my um, self, okay? Um, uh, and, you know, when we, when we do that in such situations, you know, uh, we will be able to correct ourselves, realign re ourselves to the will of God, okay? Now, sometimes, you know, um, um, when our hearts are looking for praise from men uh, and, you know, um, 
uh, in those situations where we risk losing out on acceptance from man and we face rejection instead, you know, the question is, will we in such situations still choose to praise God, right? Still choose to serve him, still continue to minister, still continue to minister with that same passion, that same fervor, with that same enthusiasm is a question we need to ask ourselves, right? Are you getting what I'm saying? Sometimes you face rejection, you're working somewhere, you're ministering somewhere in some church, the pastor is not appreciating you, not giving you the glory and honor and praise. <laughs> you know, you, you, you're working in a ministry, no appreciation. You're always pulled up and you do something wrong. Will in such situations, will you say, hey, I'm quitting, I'm leaving, I'm going to another church, you know, or I'm going to do another ministry, or I'm going to start my own church and I'm going to start my own ministry, you know. And these situations, you need to question and ask yourself, hey, why am I doing this? Because I'm looking for praise from men. I'm not looking for praise from God. And when you correct yourself, you know, you can come back and serve with that same passion, enthusiasm. God is glorified and God is the one who will raise you up and, you know, uh, lift your head up and he will bring you the glory and honor and praise that you deserve the due time and at the right time. But we continue to serve with a pure heart and with righteous motives okay we'll stop here and come back after the break and continue thank you